is there some, uh, some thing that a mathematician discovered that is just so beautiful and so gigantic that it's like the super duper best story ever told? Well, I, I think one of the stories that I was told when I was a kid, which is the proof that there are infinitely many primes. Uh, I mean, primes, they're the atoms of mathematics. They're what we build all numbers from, the indivisible numbers like 5, 7, 17. Right. So all numbers, 105 is built by multiplying 3 times 5 times 7. So they're the most basic things. So, um, but how, how many are there of these numbers? We've got 2, 3, 5, 7, 11. But maybe they're just a finite number, like the periodic table has, I don't know what it is now, 118 atoms. Maybe there are finitely many primes which you can build all numbers from. Well, Euclid proved with just a beautiful little argument 2,000 years ago that there'll always be more and more primes however far you go up the universe of numbers. And he did it like this. Suppose you have a finite number of primes. Suppose there are a finite number of primes. He said, OK, well, take, suppose one of you says, oh, I don't believe you. I don't think you So here's a list of all the primes. So Euclid says, multiply all those primes together. And then here was his act of genius. He added one to that number. And then he says, OK, so this new number that I've just built you, um, what's that built out of? It must be built out of some of your primes. You say you've got all the primes. Well, if you try and divide by any of the primes on your list, you get remainder one because of the way this number was built. So there must be some primes missing from your list. You haven't got them all. So you say, OK, well, I'll just add those. Then Euclid <laughs> says, I'll play the same trick. I multiply all those together, add one, <laughs> and you've still missed some. You lose. And here's the beauty. You know, infinity, does it exist in the physical world? I don't know, probably not. But in the mathematical world, with this finite little argument that Euclid made, he's proved that you'll never, ever run out of these prime numbers. For me, that was a magical moment. And it, it's a proof which, as but, Silent but, 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 says, but, but, lasts forever. It's, a, it's, it's, it's a t eternal. Uh, physics... But what's, uh, it, but, but, uh, what's its essence? But no, hang on, no, 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 Robert, the... Robert, Robert, Robert. Have you heard that proof before? <laughs> Yes, I have. Okay. Now, yeah. when you heard it for the first time, did that not didn't did that it, not change? Yes, it it, it didn't rock yes. your world. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, that, my first, rock is a smaller rock than your. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then coming back to the idea that, that G. H. Hardy said that you know, what, what the Greeks said about medicine we laugh at. What the Greeks said about astronomy we think it's a joke. But what the Greeks said about math we still teach it today because that mathematical truth remains forever. And see, you but you're describing this, because uh, I asked you this way, I guess, you're saying, hooray for the mind of a Greek that could think that up, aren't we clever? But the... No, the, the no, 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 no. I think we tapped into a universal well, truth about numbers. My implicit question was, yeah. Did the numbers care if, the, if, if you got number 3 trillion, 6,950, some prime way out there? That, that prime saying, I knew that. No, I but knew it's, that. Not, it's not about how so, clever... I don't know who these people it's are. Not about, I... It's not about how clever Euclid was. It's about how beautiful, in four lines of argument, you can gri grapple with infinity. For, it, it wouldn't have matter whether it was Euclid, it wouldn't matter whether it was anybody, it wouldn't matter whether it was a pet cat that did it. It's the idea that, that, that's so precious. Might be called Garfield's theorem. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but and I think it's it, what distinguishes it, it from the sciences. I mean, we're at a science festival, and I think it's important to distinguish that mathematics builds on the shoulders of giants. I mean, what that proof is true, and it'll be true forever. And in science, it's a much more evolutionary process. You propose uh, a model of the world, then you find it doesn't quite fit, and a new one comes over and knocks that one out. That doesn't happen in mathematics. Proofs gives us this certainty, yeah. and we, it allows us to, to, to really stand on the shoulders of giants and build something new. Yeah, so when, when it, that's the charm of it. I know that a, the mathematical theorems that I've proved will last forever. It's a bit of immortality, and that's why I love this subject.